in the form of a mother. Well, for me, it's not just about the mother. To me, I look at womanhood from the very first moment of a small young girl all the way. It's a great gift that God has given us that we need to appreciate every time. So God bless you, sisters. Amen. Those even or those online, we we wish you a happy is it a birthday? No, a happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're so grateful again we, for the Sunday we had last Sunday. Amen. It was a great Sunday. We appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, we are happy to see all of you. Some of you have traveled. Some of you never made it. Uh, but we, we trust the Lord is going to minister himself to us in his own word. Amen. Amen. We want to speak today on the difference between the last trump and the seventh trumpet. That one is going to be very important to all of us. We may not be able to cover everything because sometimes when you're looking at the scripture, you realize, my goodness, the whole thing is again from Genesis to Revelation. What is going on here? So sometimes it's like you just think it's a little, that's not how the Bible is written. The Bible is written carrying a really, these are eternal thoughts of God. And I want you to listen very close. I don't mind if you can say, oh, could you repeat that? What does that mean? I want us to have that kind of interactive kind of fellowship. Amen. So we don't want it to, 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 to get stuck. And I want you to be more of Bible readers. That will help you wherever you are. We don't want, we are striking and destroying that spirit where it was the Catholic. I've been a Catholic for so long. We never used to carry a Bible. And I wonder whether even Bibles were being read those days. It's just like what so and so did and things like that. And that's a spirit that is also among many Christians today. They do not study the Bible. If people are studying the Bible and following the Bible, that would have destroyed the rise of cults in the world today. We would have very few cults or even no cults at all. Someone who doesn't study the scriptures and the pastor comes and brings in a word or something and they think this person is above all of us. They exalt this man and then he becomes a girl leader. That's what the problem is. And you are denying this pastor fellowship with you because you don't study the word. Here is only one man who studies the word. It becomes a problem. So when he comes, uh, he comes uh, and talks about um, snake handlers, you know, you've seen that even on, on, tele, on YouTube. People who believe that if a snake bites you, Jesus said it cannot kill you. So someone goes, a pastor goes to the, with a snake on the pulpit, and the people are seated and they're shouting, and the snake is coming and it bites him, and the blood is all over his white shirt, and he's jabbing, saying, I cannot die, I cannot die. There was another man, one man who stood there, he said, No, this man is useless. Took him, bundled him, took him to the vehicle. Took him to the hospital where he was in coma for a long time. And his father had died because he was beaten by a snake. There are no people in the congregation who can stand up and say, Pastor, you said this. Where is the scripture for it? So that the people listening to the word can also be able to hold the man accountable on the pulpit. So that the people don't just move into sensationalism and they get excited. And then someone comes because he studied the scriptures, they don't. So when he says something, it's like, wow, wow. And then they exalt the man. Then the man becomes a great cult leader. I don't want that myself. I want people who can understand the word even more than I do in my own congregation. I want sisters who can understand the word more than I do. I want people who can share with me and say, Pastor, there is something here we saw. It's very interesting. You've done that and I appreciate that. That will be able to put us under the spirit of God. Amen. Not just people running with something, I was sleeping and God gave me a vision. When you go through the scriptures, it's not even there. And then, it, then people build churches, big churches out of the same. And it's not only among the churches we came from. These things seem to be ag across the board. People don't study the word of God. They do not. Because they have got a pastor, they are giving a salary. So that one is supposed to read for them and preach for them and they go home. No! He has no heaven to take you. Amen? Amen? You have your own celestial body. You have your own inheritance on the other side. Amen. We all join together when it comes to, to the word of God. So let's go straight to the scriptures. My desire for you is well expressed in those few words. Study the word of God. Amen. Challenge yourself by the word of God. Amen. Remove some things you used to believe when you get confronted with a new truth. 
that is in the scriptures. Be first to drop that narrative and go to the scriptures. You will be better saved that way. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's go to Revelation. There are a few things here that we cannot avoid because they, they are pertinent, they go together with it. And uh, we are happy when I had these, uh, the little ones singing. And then I realized Yakina is not in. Then I miss Yakina too hard. And uh, I thought well, we are going back to pick her maybe on 25th. Some of you that God helped you take the children to school, we appreciate God. And those who are still doing it, we believe that God is going to give all that is necessary for us that we can be able to fulfill our, our obligations. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 10. We may come back to Revelation chapter 8 to really have a context and a text so that we don't just pick up a text and run with a text, ignoring the context, ignoring the whole body of what was being introduced as it comes down. Then we pick a verse down here below and build a doctrine out of it, ignoring how we travel from there up to here. We cannot just come around and talk about the seventh trumpet, picking the seventh trumpet without first of all reading there was a first trumpet, a second, to abide with the context. Yeah? So we shall come back to that if God will help us. But uh, Revelation 10, 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he has declared to his servants, the prophets. In the days when the seventh angel shall begin to sound, shall begin to sound like the other angels have been sounding. Amen. How are the other angels sounding it? That is Revelation chapter 8. We have got under what we call the seventh seal. When he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of an hour. And I saw seven angels who stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Revelation 8 does not even talk about the coming of the Lord. Did you see it? Did you see where it says in Revelation 8, when he opened the seventh seal equals to the coming of the Lord? Is it there? The only thing we see under the seventh seal is seven angels preparing with the seven trumpets. That's what the Bible says. You will allow us to go with the scriptures. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given to him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer. I, I want us to, because we've announced the scriptures we want to read, we shall come back to this. Amen? We shall come back to this to pick ourselves. But I want us to deal with the scripture we've re written and sent out even online for the people to follow us. Revelation 10, 7. And in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he had declared to his servant the prophets. That scripture is telling us that angels had already been sounding. Yes. Then we are coming now to the seventh angel. Amen. When John wanted to write, he said, no, don't write. When that time comes, so the question will be very clear. Did that angel sound, seventh angel, or you have got two angels with the, se with the seventh trumpet? The Bible only talks of one angel with the seventh trumpet. And Revelation 10, 7 is preparation for that time. There is something you wanted to write, but don't write it. But when the seventh angel sounds, the mystery of God that was hid, no, the mystery of God that had been declared by the servants shall be finished. Not preached, not revealed, not manifested, Amen. but finished. Amen. Which means that mystery has been running on. Amen. 
And it was in the hands of God's servants, the prophets. Amen. Now it is coming to an end. Amen. Not to be revealed. That is the scripture. Amen. Then Revelation eleven fifteen, And the seventh angel sounded as had been promised in Revelation 10, 7. Now he is sounding. Did Revelation 10, 7, did he sound? No. no. When, he when he shall. Some of these guys must be having a problem in their head, like their own prophet. Revelation 10, 7 says, when he shall. Sound. Revelation eleven fifteen, and he shall. And when he sounded, every person want to find out what happened. When he sounded, it's supposed to be the finishing of the mystery of God that had been declared Amen. to his servant, the prophets. Amen. It means every prophet that declared the mystery of God is looking forward to this sounding. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we raise our na your name on high, we magnify you. Amen. Speak yourself to us according to the scriptures Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. So the seventh trumpet is connected to the reigning of Jesus Christ. Amen. Forever. And it's also connected with the kingdoms of this earth. Now they have been taken over by one, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What was that? The seventh trumpet. You may be seated. At that time, the Bible says, And the four and twenty elders who sat before God on their thrones. They sat before God on their It means recording that. Revelation 11.15 And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord, and is Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So the seventh trumpet is connected to the kingdom of the Lord. Amen. Not only that, it is connected, as we see in Revelation 10, 7, to the ending of a program that God had already declared through his servants, the prophets. Amen. So the scriptures, as we see them, they do not present the seventh trumpet as a revealing are manifesting or are making known of any secret or mystery that was locked up in these denominational ages. I'm quoting someone. There is no scripture that says when the seventh angel sound, the mystery of God would be finished as he has declared to his servant, the prophets, the mystery will now be revealed. And that mystery will be called the seven seals. It's nowhere. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And further on that, there is no place where the Bible calls the seven seals mysteries. <laughs> All the translation, I have 19 translations of the Bible. None of them calls the seven seals mysteries to be revealed by Revelation 10.7. None of them does that. Revelation 10.7 is talking about the seventh trumpet that is supposed to follow the sixth trumpet that is in Revelation 9. Yep. Revelation 9 has got how many trumpets? Two. The fifth trumpet and the sixth trumpet. Revelation 8 has four trumpets. Amen. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm saying that. Revelation 8 has four trumpets. We are not preaching the trumpets today. 
we are just setting a stage for the seventh trumpet and the last trump. Are they the same? Because our message is the difference between the seventh trumpet and the last trump. Verse 17. The four, 24 elders say, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord, O God Almighty, who art and was and are to come, because thou hast taken to thee great power and hast reigned. Umejikuwa mamula kamaku na ukatawala. Under the seventh trumpet is the reign. God has taken power and is reigning. Amen. And the nations were angry. And the wrath is come, and the time of the dead, and that they should be judged, that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear the name, small and great, and should destroy them who destroyed the earth. We don't want to go farther, but this seventh trumpet that is sounds in Revelation eleven fifteen goes all the way to Revelation twelve. Revelation 13, Revelation 14, those are the events under the seventh trumpet because God is now finishing what he had declared to his servant, the prophets. Amen. We saw last Sunday why John was, the Bible says very well in Matthew 11, chapter 13, all the prophets prophesied until John. Amen. And that was the time the program of God was supposed to end. But the program never ended. He suspended that program. And when Peter looked at it, he said, hey, there is a time coming called the refreshing from the Lord. Amen. When Peter looked at it in the first, uh, first Peter, he says, guard yourself, guard your loins, that at the end of your hope, he says that, and the grace that shall be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. There are people who are expecting grace to be brought to them at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then John stands and says, I was in the spirit. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we ask a very simple question. Would John get a revelation about the Lord Jesus Christ and go to tell Paul? That Paul, Jesus revealed himself to me, and I saw something about him I want to tell you. When Peter, when Paul himself stands up and says, those that appear to be pillars among, me, among them, James, John, and Peter added nothing to my message. But now you have called John, Writing to an Ephesus, an Ephesus messenger or angel called Paul. And he's telling Paul, this was the revelation of Jesus. When I looked at him, this is what I saw. I'm telling it to you. That Jesus Christ would give, Simon would give Paul a revelation of himself. And turn around and tells John, go and tell Paul. Because he's a messenger of Ephesus church age. When John himself discovered, Paul had something they never had. Amen. When Peter said, Paul has something that we do not have. When P Peter in Paul says, stands up and says, The revelation that I preach unto you, I was never taught by any man, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ himself. Amen. So Jesus Christ leaves some revelation, he doesn't give it to Paul. He goes to John and tells John, John look here. I want you to go and tell Paul something. Because Paul is a messenger of Ephesus. So I want you to go and tell him, I found your work. I know your patience, your work. <laughs> See where you've fallen. Can you imagine John telling Paul that the Paul and his people are fallen? This is the kind of nonsense we've heard. Yes. Paul dies around 64 AD. When Nero burned, that's what he used to say. 
And then the same history says John was in Patmos. That's what they say. Patmos in 96 AD. So Paul stands when he's ready to die. He tells Timothy, I've finished my course. I'm ready to be offered. When Paul himself stands in the book of Philippians, he says, I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm betwixt whether I should go or remain. And then he says, if I go, it won't be very good for you, but it will be beneficial for you if I remain. And then he sees his death that close. Not 50 years later. He says, I've finished. In other words, I'm not going to live an extra minute. I've done what God called me to do. Amen. I'm now ready to be offered. Amen. And before me is a crown that is awaiting me. Amen. And then God takes Paul like he would take any other person. Then after Paul is dead, then God forgets Paul is dead. He tells John, hey, can you write this letter to Paul? Because Branham says in the Beckerman Church Age that the message was sent to the angel, not to the church. So this message of Paul was sent to Paul while Paul was dead. And he couldn't even do it. And they have been told, repent and do the first works. This is the kind of man people are telling us he's a prophet. He comes around and says Columbus, the church of Columbus, began in 606. History will tell you Columbus died in 597. But also, right to Columbus, he's dead. I was not aware when he was dying, so now write and send it to him. This is the kind of nonsense that is being preached. And the people are swelling because they cannot cross-check with the scriptures. That God, for the first time in the message of Branham, he can send a letter to a dead person to admonition a dead person what he needs to do while he's not even there because this is a God that does not understand. Paul died. Oh, I, I took Paul the other day in death. I even showed Paul is going to die. This is a problem, isn't it? Yes. This is where the problem is. So when you are looking at the way the scripture is, the scripture is the only hope for God's people. Amen. 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 It's not the rest. I have got a book here. Can you just bring it to me? Just in the back there. Yes, that's one. I have a book here called The Serpent's Tale. It is 720 pages. It is a story about the people that are called the tap boys that are recording the messages of William Branham. What they used to do in that place. And one of them was there who were molested by this same guy. And Branham visited that place. I have it here. It came three days ago. I purchased it. Very, very bad things happened to these guys there. They were called tap boys. Branham went there and blessed. that is the place where they were waiting for the coming of the Lord. Branham called that place Little Caution. It, the information is right here. If you read, come to know what these people went through under these two innocent people called Leo Marcia and Norman Jean, you would fail to understand. How even another young man had to be killed by the police because he was traumatized in his mind because of what he went through in that park by these guys. How another young man from there went and shot another man in a place with the people that Branham called themselves, they'll be a part of the 10 vision that never got fulfilled. It's right here. I'm very hard today. If you read what these guys went through, with Dalton went through, believers of the message, in that place called the park. You would wonder how much of a cult is the message of William Branham. And the people fear to talk about it. Is it homosexual and everything that, all it is here, it's not me saying it. All the molestation is written in this book by the people who attended this place. But because someone is asking a, a, a question, he's saying, how come these things you are saying it now? How come you have a phone now that you never had before? 
How come you have internet today that you never had before? Now we can understand these things and we realize it is God that wanted to understand this. There used to be a preacher who used to call others takataka. This is a time to call you to takataka. Because it's not helping your soul. Amen. It is imprisoning your father. If you read the book of Revelation, it does not even call anywhere the seventh seal equals to the coming of the Lord. But there are the scriptures that talk about the coming of the Lord and they can't be ignored because they are explicit in the scriptures. There is no, there is no week that passes without people calling and saying, we've been following you, we've left this cult. We've been calling you, we, we've been following you, we've left this cult. People from different places are getting free. Amen. 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 I've had three sons of pastors that have conducted us, telling us they're going free out of this nonsense. Amen. People are dying for the scriptures. Amen. Another sister said, I thought maybe the problem is with my Bible. So let me go and purchase another Bible. She went and purchased another Bible. The problem was not the, the Bible. The problem was the message and the preachers. Yes. We want to get out of this and we want to make sure we've covered the place. If I told you what is Russia in the scriptures, you will be surprised when the people are running calling Russia. They will be surprised. There is no Russia there. That will be a good Bible study. That will be a good Bible study. Can you just look at this? Where is this place in the Bible? Where is this? Where is it? Where is it in the world today? Praise the Lord. Amen. So now we can begin. Is it lonely saying these things? It is not lonely. It's the right thing to be said. Yes. Amen. Get God's people go free. The Bible says you are bought with a price. Amen. Be ye not servants of men. Amen. You are born with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I just feel it's the right time to say this. When he comes around and he preaches a message, marriage and divorce, and he demonizes women, calls them dogs, calls them pigs, and then he stands around and says, God told me I, I've forgiven you. I don't need Brandon's forgiveness. You need the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brandon never forgave nobody. Jesus Christ forgave you. Amen. It is Jesus that died and that's the man that Amen. forgave you. Amen. Not William Branham. Oh, thank you. In that message called marriage and divorce, demonizes women. Call them a scrap. Call them the lowest thing. Call them dog, female dogs. Some of the words I can, cannot mention. Happy Mother's Day, we, you women, wherever you are. Amen. He calls you sorts of things, and then he comes and says, I have forgiven you. And someone told him, where did you get the power to forgive? The forgiveness we have is forgive one another. But the things pertaining to God, Jesus died. Amen. And God sent his son Jesus to forgive us. Amen. He didn't send another person. He didn't even send me to forgive you. Amen. I tell you, he sent Jesus to forgive you. Amen. Then someone comes and says, hey, here, I've forgiven you. He wasn't forgiving you. He was forgiving his son, Billy Paul. <laughs> Billy Paul is the one who had that problem. And according to his preaching, it was very hard for Billy Paul to stand and be a pastor after the hosted brother Neville. Who became the pastor that day when Neville had been hosted? When Neville served the communion in that day, which scripture did Brother Neville read? He read the scripture that says, when Jesus talked about the Jews at Iscariot, and he said, do what you want to do quickly. And Neville left the church, buried elsewhere. I went to his grave. Brother Collins was sent away recently, the one that was assistant pastor, so that Joseph could be the pastor. And every year, they vote in William Branham, can't, because they believe he's coming back to be latent. And that's why every year, December, they vote in William Branham. What was he forgiving? In that message, he wasn't forgiving you. You are forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ. Not because you married twice or three times. You are forgiven because you are a sinner, period. Yeah. You are not forgiven because you married twice, three times, four times. It is William Branham, I said here, that wedded his brother three times after he has divorced. 
coward that married the sister to Hope Bloomberg, wedded, was wedded by Branham, divorced, wedded, divorced, wedded by who? Branham. And another one, and another one. So it was right for him to stand and say, I forgive you. So he did the right thing because that was the clientele. That was the customers to buy that product. Mm. Billy Paul needed it yes. so that he can stand and be a pastor. His brothers needed it. According to him, not according to God. According to God, Jesus forgave you. Amen. When he took your sin, hallelujah, Amen. and you became the righteousness of God, that is where your forgiveness began. Amen. No man can come and demonize you Amen. and tell you, if I preach marriage and divorce in the true sense, there is no church in America that will stand. What are you talking about? Are you Jesus? Then he comes around and says, hey, you know what? If God told me, I was even blaming you for some of the believers for not having read the messages to know what you are talking about. I'm glad you didn't read them. You would be more destroyed not trying to fight in your mind. He says, if God told me to choose 12 out of this generation, I would be scared to death. That, that's 1965. 1959, he says, I wonder whether 12 can make it from this generation. When the Bible talks about a body, he has blessed us, he has translated us he's in the kingdom of his son. When the Bible says we are sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, when Paul says you are the crown of my rejoicing, and some idiot comes and says, I wonder whether 12 can make it. Amen. Heaven belongs to Branham. No. Paul saw you and he says, I can now depart. Amen. Amen. When the book of Revelation talked about 144,000 in Revelation chapter 7, chapter, chapter 7, verse 9 downward, it says, And there was a multitude and a multitude yeah. that no man could number. It was not 12, you Branham. Amen. And the angel asked John. John who are these? And John said, I thought we are only 12,000 from every tribe. I'm seeing another multitude that I don't know who they are. Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible say, they had washed their garments in the blood of the Lamb. And they were white. They, 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 they had their, their palms in their hand. And they were singing. And you, can't, you couldn't count them. And the Bible says they came out of the great tribulation. And someone says, I wonder if the 12 can make it. Why did Paul say the Lord himself shall descend? And those who are alive shall be changed, and we shall forever be with the Lord. Amen. And someone comes and says, I wonder whether 12 can make it. He says if God told him to choose 12 from this generation, he would be scared to death. Like God told Branham to choose. The blood of Jesus Christ died for you. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory. And he has got a program for your change. Amen, amen, amen. He has got a program to take you off the amen. earth. And that program he called the last trump, amen. not the seventh trumpet. Amen. I want us to go slowly. Amen. The seventh trumpet and the last trumpet are two programs of God. Amen. One is called seventh, which means it, it ends. Amen. Another one is called last because that is the last thing that God will do for you, amen. beloved body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It has got a beginning, it has got an end. Amen. One of them is called the seventh, following seven trumpets. Another one is called, praise the Lord. Amen. And that's why women were demonized. I told another brother, if I see you treating me, talking to me the way you are talking to me, don't tell me you've left Branham. You are just still advancing white supremacy. You think even the black cannot present the word of God? Because you still have that marijuana in your head. Where, where Branham told the blacks are the serpent seed and they couldn't speak it publicly. And then you come here defending such a man. Such a man should be white off. Yeah. And be told the truth and thought, you have a lot of stuff that will burn. And he comes and says, there is nothing lower on earth than a woman. 
That was abusive. Yes. That was abusing the women attribute of God. Yes. And that's why even sisters cannot get married because their pastors are anointed in the same spirit. They are downlooked upon because she got saved and she had a baby somewhere. So she's not a saint. Who is a saint? A person who has children or a person that has been sanctified by Jesus. The person who has been saved by the blood of Jesus, that is a saint. Not a person who has got children or no children. If a prostitute stood here today, the blood of Jesus, Amen. Branham committed sacrilege when he said 12 cannot make it out of this generation. He was actually saying the blood of Jesus was not capable Amen. of saving the people. Amen. He was not talking against you. He was talking about the sufficiency of the blood of the Son of God. When he said you can't make it without the message, he was saying, Jesus, your sacrifice is not sufficient. We say it is sufficient to wash any prostitute, any person, the blood of Jesus will set you free today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Who comes and the Bible says they frustrate the grace of God. Amen. And make some qualification for you to qualify. Then give you some little books called the token. And then God requires a token on every house. And then it demonizes you, makes you look like there is nothing you've done. Makes it so narrow that you people look up to Branham. Mm. That the people will go, I visited the grave. When I was still a Branhamite. I will never visit it today. Amen. Another one was actually lying yesterday. That you see Branham went seven times around the whole world. He didn't. He even made some white lies. Like on the grave of Muhammad, there is a white horse that is changing one hour every hour. <laughs> it's not even there. He comes and lies to you. Some of the things he says, the pyramid, there is no shadow around it. And people believe. Did you go to Australia? He's gone to all the seven continents. And another man said yesterday, he has gone everywhere. He even went to Kenya. I told you, preacher, he didn't come to Kenya. Mau Mau would never would allow him. Thank God for Mau Mau. <laughs> he said in the message, audible, broken system. He wanted to come to, he said, I wanted, I, I want to go to, no, leave a He said, I wanted to go to Nairobi and then Kenya. He even doesn't know Nairobi is the capital of Kenya. He said, I wanted to go to Nairobi and then Kenya. Then the people want to spiritualize it. But because there was an uprising in Kenya called Mau Mau, he couldn't come. Thank God, Mau Mau, you did the right thing. Let this man come here to deceive people. Yes. That's the truth. That is true. Yes. Thank God for Mau Mau use. But they, they, they found their way here. Then we are telling them, we are not believers of that cult. Yes. Because it's unscriptural. Yes. Question I would want to ask. Would God tell John, you are an Elijah, that is announcing and making known the Messiah to Israel. And then there will be another Elijah to make known the Messiah to the Gentiles called Malachi 4, and at the same time he ignores that, he goes and calls Paul and tells Paul, I've sent you the Gentiles, while he knew very well there is an Elijah who's coming to the Gentiles. Would God confuse himself like that? That he knows he has got Malachi 4, who's going to forerun the Messiah to the Gentiles the way John forerun the Messiah to the children of Israel, and he comes around and tells Paul, I send you to the Gentiles. We would do that when he knew there is a messenger. He wouldn't have sent Paul. So the claims of William Branham is actually rubbishing the mystery of Christ revealed to Paul and preached from Romans 9 to Philemon. He is taking it away so they can replace himself there. You know the reason why he's fighting that? It is because according to Ephesians 11, those are the people who will bring perfection. And if you have got the people getting perfected by the fivefold ministry, they will tell you, I don't need a prophet. Yes. Amen. And the Bible says when Jesus ascended, Amen. he gave gifts unto men. Amen. 
some apostles, plural, some prophets, plural, some teachers, plural, some evangelists, plural, some pastors, plural. For what purpose? To reveal mysteries? No. Can you read us what the purpose of the fivefold ministry? So that we raise your expectation to the scriptural way. What is the, when he ascended up to heaven, the same one who came to Paul, sent ministries on earth. For what purpose? <clears throat> yes. Ephesians chapter 4. Mm. Ephesians. Hello. <clears throat> now, verse 9. Yes. Now he that ascended. Yes. What is it but he that also descended? Yes, yes. Into the lower parts of the earth. Yep. He that descended is the same also that ascended. He that descended is the same one who ascended. Far, up, far above all heavens. Yes. That he might fill all things. Mm -hmm. And he gave some. He gave some. Some prophets. Yes. Some evangelists. Those are, that is plural. Yes. Some pastors, go ahead. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Plural. For the now the purpose. Yes. We and look at the purpose, verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. For the perfecting of the saints. This is a perfect saint under the fivefold ministry. Amen. A perfect saint ready for the rapture because God has given him ministry. Amen. What does that priest perfect saint need a prophet for? Show me a time when God. He raised the fivefold ministry. And if he raised it, tell me the program where he said he's going to reignite it by sending Malachi 4. No scripture for it. Amen. Go ahead. For the some of us, some of you on the line online, they are wondering what we are talking about. We are talking about the call of William Branham that we left. Mm. We are rescuing some. Yes. So don't say just preach the Bible. No, no, no. We are destroying something here. We are destroying a serpent. Amen. What do I mean by a serpent? There was a serpent in the wilderness called the brazen serpent. Amen. And people would look at it and would get healed. Yes. And when Jesus came, he said, as the serpent was lifted, shall the son of man be lifted. But those guys smuggled, smuggled that serpent and called it in the Bible Neheshutan. Uh -huh. And then they started worshipping that serpent. Josiah came and destroyed it and took it away. That's what we are taking away from the minds of the people. We are taking the Heshutan that is taking the worship of Jesus Christ. That's what we are doing. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the defying of the body. Let's go slowly. For the perfecting of the what? Saints. Is the perfecting of the saints subjected to the seven sins? No. To the seven thunders? No. To the seventh trumpet? No. To the third pool? No. If the saints would be perfected without the third pool of someone, if they would be perfected without the seventh seal, without the seven thunders, what audacity do you have to say it will take the seven thunders to add to that little group there that will take the word of God and hand it right there? I tell you, it will cut and slice. Cut who? None. Read for us. Continue. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Can someone count for me? For the perfecting of the saints. One. one. Uh -huh. For the work of the ministry. Two. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Three. Amen. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. Four. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And to a perfect man. And to a perfect man. <laughs> and, and then? And to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. People who sit under this ministry will be perfect, will be edified, will not run to and fro. They will have the measure of Christ. Amen. Paul, where did you get this? Amen. He says a dispensation was given to me. Amen. What is a dispensation? A household. Amen. And the dispenser is called the governor. Amen. So Paul ended in the household, in the household, came out with the fivefold ministry that Simon Peter, James, Jude, 
John knew nothing about it. That's how you don't get the fivefold ministry in the letters of the, the apostles I've mentioned. Only Paul. Why? A dispensation was given to him. Amen. Show me another person. Continue. So we find out in the fivefold ministry, what do we have? We have as the stature and the fullness of Christ. My goodness. Go ahead. That we have for be no more children. So that we are no more children. You see what it is doing? Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. Tossed to and fro. Mm -hmm. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. Mm -hmm. By the slight of man. Mm -hmm. And cunning craftiness. Yes. Whereby they lie in way to deceive. These are the people paragated, fortified, that maturity, the measure of Christ, perfection is among them. And when they sit under these ministries, they can never be tossed to and fro. Amen. 1977, until they say, no, 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 1977, he made a mistake. Should have been 1988, because it is a generation. 40 years is a generation. I will tell you what that would stand for. There's no scripture that says a nation that you see Israel becoming a nation. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's what the five old ministry is supposed to do. Amen. Let's go to our message. Let's go to our scripture now. And then we begin right there. Let's go to First Corinthians. That Paul, God would knew very well there is a John. Could, John could, could, could God replace John, who was the forerunner? <coughs> Could he replace John with another prophet? Could he even send another prophet to do what John should have done? But how come it is said he kept Malachi 4 to come to the Gentiles long after Paul has already come? Gentiles has already saved. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of John, the Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 31, I baptized with water to make manifest Jesus to Israel. He's explaining the reason why he baptized with water. To reveal Jesus to Israel. Amen? Amen. So he will reveal Jesus to Israel. John. Who revealed Jesus to the Gentiles? Paul. Amen. Paul revealed Jesus to the Gentiles. Amen? Amen? Amen. John revealed Jesus to Israel. But now when Jesus has already been known to the Gentiles, they need a prophet to do what? Our sister asked a very simple question that I thought was a very good question. He said, she said this. Now, did Branham have to go to Arizona? When whatever he said was in his own library, in his house, in the den room, the den room was a library of Branham with every book. And the things he said, he caught them from those books. Why do you go to Arizona? And which kind of angels are these angels that do not know what is written in the books? So they tell Branham, I'm, I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this and this, it's me. I'm visiting you every day, every day. I see an angel, I see an angel, I see an angel. Only to find out there are people who wrote those things in the books and there was no angel connected to it. Which one would you believe? Who had a greater revelation? A person who claims an angel came and the things he said were said by someone? Not only lacking many, there are seven men. I'm going to get into it one of these days. Yep, we need to. Yes. Throw it and then you can make your own choice that you want to make. So an angel comes and tells you, you know what? It is like firing a rocket. <laughs> huh? The angel comes and tells you, you know what, Branham? Seventh Sea is like firing. And then he oh, boldly comes on the pulpit and says, I was reading it from an old context. If it wasn't for the midnight today, when the light of the Lord came, and I took my pen and went and walked in the park, I would have made a serious mistake. And then the next statement has already been said by someone. The very statement he wanted to say, the angel came for. Let me tell you today. Even if I remain alone, wherever you go, you will say he said this. 
If it's the last sermon I'm preaching before I die, I'm saying it today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. So he comes and says, the seventh sea is like firing a rocket. And then, Clarence in his book, The Revelation, page 68, he says the seventh seal is like firing a rocket. The one he claims the angel. When we go to heaven, we ask them, Clarence, where did you get yours? He said it was out of study. And you? The angel. Can you bring that angel here? <laughs> and tell the angel, why did you steal the works of Clarence and gave it to Branham? Why did you steal the work of Uriah Smith and gave it to Branham? Why did you steal the work of Jill? The work of Ban, the work of uh, Weasels, Dr. Schofield. Why did you steal the work of Ras Tazel? You angel, what's wrong with you angel? Aren't you the one we are going to judge? Someone said there were no angels. There were no angels. Angels don't lie. The angel that lies is the one we know him. Angels don't lie. And you don't steal words. They abide by Jeremiah 23. God says, I'm against prophets that steal the words of other prophets saying it's me. Angels must abide with that. Amen. Branham, I don't want to ask you a question. What did the angel say? People want to say, the angels revealed to him. Reveal to him what? So already there in the books. Can you saying you must be coming close to Finishing these things, yeah. You are coming out, we are preaching hard, we are finishing them. We want to concentrate on the body of Christ. Yeah. We want now to come and say, hey, we've now said that we've corrected this and we are destroying all of it. Yes. Where you say to watch Russia, we are going to go back to the scriptures mm -hmm. and find out where Russia belongs in the Bible. You will be surprised it's not there. Just as much as Kenya is not there. <laughs> you know the question you're asking is you not know, a scripture question. You are asking based on what he said and you believed. That's it. You say it right, it's not where it's supposed to be. You can write it down, look for the word Tubal and Meshek. That is attributed to Russia and find out where is it today in the, in the map of the world. Tubal. T-U-B-A-L and Meshek. Where is it found? And why is God dealing with a certain region? That small region that will be a place where evil powers will be tested and where all good powers will be tested. It's not coming here. There is a place that God had in mind. When he stands there, he says north. Another man comes and tells you north is Russia. God did not have a continent in mind. He had a country in mind. A place where he stood and he said, this is north, this is east, this is west, that is south. He was not looking at a continent of Europe and Asia. He was dealing with the one nation that the vocal events of the earth are connected to. Amen. So when he comes say, Russia is in the north of Europe, Asia continent. Russia is not in the north of Israel. Amen. One of us, is that true? Amen. Is it in the rose of Israel? No. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, time is coming when you shall no longer say, the Lord liveth who took us from the land of Egypt. But you shall say, the Lord liveth who took us from the land of the north. Where did Israel, where was Israel taken captives? After Egypt was? Babylon is in the north of Israel? <laughs> Did they come out of Babylon under Zerubbabel, yes. Ezra, and Nehemiah? Yes. Was that prophecy fulfilled? Yes. Watch Russia, watch Russia. Continue watching Russia. We are watching Jesus Christ and his program for us. Amen. Amen. Now let's go slowly now. Let's go to the book of... Um, our next scripture that is important there is 1 Corinthians 15 from 46 to 49. Follow closely. I want to reduce my voice now. However, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And after that, which is spiritual. Follow me closely. The first man is of the earth, earthy. 
The second man is the Lord from heaven. Who is the first man in this sense that Paul is talking about? Adam? Let's go slowly. Who is the first man that uh, Paul is talking about? Adam is the first man. He is earthly, earthy. And the second man is the Lord from heaven. Who is this Lord from heaven? The Lord Jesus. The first man of the, is of the earth, earthy. The second man is, or is the Lord from heaven. As is the earth, such are they also that are earthy. Does anyone have another translation? He is now dealing with the two people. Oh, praise the Lord. He is dealing with the two people. Amen. He is saying the first man is from the earth. Earthy. Are we together so far? Amen. The first man is of the earth. Earthy. The second man is the Lord himself from heaven. Amen. But down there he says, and even those. We have, must have a division, isn't it? What does it say? As the earth, such are they. Is now another people here. Also that are earthy. And as is heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Are there two people there? You don't seem to be getting it. I'm reading it. You have your, I'm reading it from NIV says, The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as the heavenly man, so are also those who are heavenly. How many people are we getting there? So we are people, the heavenly people and the earthly people. These people are now going to show us why God created the heaven and he created the earth. Now, these two people that were presented, all of them is first Adam and second Adam. Amen. And all of them were the head of races. Adam is the head of the earthly race. And Jesus is the head of the heavenly race. Because the first man is earthy. Earthly man, so are those. Did they say that? So also are those who are of the earth. And the second man is the Lord himself from heaven. So also are those who are of heaven. Where are you? Heaven or earth? Now, who is the head of you? The Lord Jesus. And is from heaven and those who are heavenly. No, I'm adding something there if you can follow it very closely. So does it mean Adam is the head of the earthly people? Amen. Yeah. Is Adam the man? <laughs> Hallelujah. Is Adam the man of the earthly people? Amen. You think when Adam gets resurrected, he will change his position as a father? Or will he be the head? Of the earthly people. No, I'm just reading the Bible. By one man, sin entered. By one man, people are justified. Is Jesus called the first Adam? No. He's called the second Adam. Is Adam called the first Adam as it were? Are they all of them head of races? Are you the race of Adam or the head of the race of Jesus? Does the Bible say if a man be in Christ, he's a new creation? Does the Bible say Jesus Christ is the head of the church? Amen. Amen. Oh. oh. Amen. I'm telling you. Amen. He has blessed you with the heavenly things. Amen. Because you are a sojourner, you are a stranger on earth. Amen. 
Every little property you have, it is because there is a person who has given the earth and is only an overflow of the wealth of Israel. Israel, this earth is theirs. Amen. Every country that says I've got a diamond, I've gold, like our African country, Congo, it is not theirs. They have it because God gave the earth to Israel. Amen. It is an overflow. Do you understand? Yeah. Any good thing you are enjoying today, it is because God loved Israel. Yeah. They were given their physical blessings. And because we are in flesh like them, we partake of them. Yeah. That's why some of you are rich. Some of them are going to get rich. It is not literally just your riches. It is because there is a principle that God is upholding. Israel and the riches of the earth is theirs. Yeah. And he says in Jeremiah 31, if they are, if you can change the sun and the moon and remove them out of existence, so shall the nation of Israel cease to be a nation before me. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31 going down on God is talking about a new covenant. So, uh, a new covenant that is going to make with the house of Israel and Judah. So all of you, any good thing you have physically on earth, it is because it is being protected and kept by a principle that God gave to Israel. He gave them the earth. Are we together so far? Amen. That's why you are going to leave them where? Yes. That's why you will go without them. They are not needed up there. Yes. They are the blessings of the earth. Because El Elyon is the possessor of the heaven and the earth. And when Paul looked at El Elyon, he said, as having nothing, yet possessing all things. Amen. As poor and yet making many rich. And that's why we cannot be deceived by the riches of this world. We are using them in our vocation as we go home. Amen. Amen. So Adam is the head of one race. And Jesus is the head of another race. Let's continue. And then he says. As the earth, such are they also that are earthy. And as the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthy, and that image of the earth was feeding on the things from the earth. And the earth was given to who? When I say Israel, you don't, don't, don't just find out exactly what I mean. I will show you in the scriptures, I have no time, to show the very land that God gave to Adam is the very land he gave to Abraham. You know you're quiet? Because you're not reading it? The same land that God gave to Adam is the same land he gave to Abraham. And he gave him even the pigons, gave him the map, gave him the coordinates. And those places are mentioned in the scriptures. And he came and gave Abraham the same piece of land. Do you understand? Amen. <laughs> now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit in corruption. You know very well there is a kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. You understand that? Because before there was a God, God dividing a kingdom, which is called the kingdom of heaven, God already was the king of the universe. Amen? Verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Amen. That one is called under what trumpet? Last trump. But Revelation 11, 15 tells us, and when he blew the last trumpet, the seventh trumpet, which is the last in that order, the kingdoms of this earth became the kingdoms of our Lord. But this trumpet right here brings you the body change. Amen. Are they the same? I want to ask you a question. I think this will be good. I want to ask you a question. How many of you are the candidates of the first resurrection? Even if you don't know, just say it. I said you should. How many of you are looking forward for the first resurrection? 
You want to say all of you are so strained in the scripture, none of you is looking for the first resurrection. <laughs> none of you is looking for the first resurrection. What kind of resurrection are you looking for? Was there a resurrection because we are dealing, when we are dealing with the trumpet, we must weave in resurrections. Not all of them at full. But where is the first resurrection? Can we go to, let's go to Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. And then we shall qualify ourselves whether we are the candidates of that resurrection or not. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. The last trumpet, I mean the last, it's called the last trump, is no different from what you find in the second Thessalonians. For the Lord himself shall descend with a shout, the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God. So the last trump written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, it is called the trump, the last trump is the same as what Paul is calling the trump of God in 2 Thessalonians. And is different from the seventh trumpet in Revelation. You wondering? Here is the difference. The first trump, the, 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 the last trump in Thessalonians, in 1 Corinthians 15.51, resurrects you and takes you up to heaven while the last trumpet takes the people into the millennium. Amen. I repeat, the last trump written in 1 Corinthians takes you into a body change where the mortal will put on immortality. Amen? Amen. And the last the seventh trumpet, when he blows, the voices say, the kingdoms of this earth have become the kingdoms of our Lord. So the last trump has to do with the body of Christ, and the seventh trumpet has to do with Israel. And there is a seven-year period between the trump of God, which is otherwise called the last trump, and the trumpet, which is called the seventh trumpet. I repeat, the last trump in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 has to do with the body change of the people who are going to heaven. Did I make that clear? And that same one is the one that you find. Can we read 2 Thessalonians, Brother Godfrey, for us? Read 2 Thessalonians for us. Read for us. If, Second Thessalonians. Four sixteen. Yes. Second Thessalonians or first? It's first Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Sorry. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven. With a shout. With a shout. With the voice of the archangel. With the voice of the archangel. And the trump of God. And the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise fast. And the dead in Christ shall rise fast. First Corinthians 15. Behold, I show a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Is it the same thing? It is the same thing. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Then we which are alive, we which are alive sh that remain, shall be caught up together. He is then talking about something that Israel didn't know. Translation. Yes. They didn't know something called to be translated. Yes. What are you going to do with the scripture that say no man has ever gone to heaven? That's Jesus, huh? When you know Enoch went to heaven, Elijah went to heaven, so and so went to heaven. And Jesus said, I tell you, no man has ever ascended to heaven, except he that came down from heaven, that is also in heaven. What are you going to do? Then you have to understand now, ha ha. Heaven is for who? 
Where did they go? Which of Endo? I love it, isn't it? Which of Endo when you were called to call Samuel to come out of the place where he was in paradise? Where did he come from? The Bible does not say he came from heaven. Saul asked this woman, where, what are you seeing? He said, I see gods rising from the earth. But Paul said, I was taken up, up to the third heaven. I was caught up, up to the third heaven. Because there is the first heaven, second, and third. No man has ascended up to the third heaven. Except he that came down from heaven. And the second one that will go, tell me who it is. Amen. You. Because no man has ascended. But this time the Lord shall come. With a shout, with a voice, and the trump of God and shall be caught up. How could another person go to heaven when the earth is their domain and heaven belongs to another people? Those who are earthy, earthy. Those who are heavenly, heavenly. Amen. Don't forget El Elyon. I'm wondering whether you people go through some of these things we preach. Because some of you call me and we talk about things. Some of you are reminding me you said this. Hey, I never remember that. And it's a nice fellowship. Other, others are also asking things you've preached here. And that's what I'm saying. Why don't you read? It helps the mind. You are a human being. You forget. I forget two things too. But refresh your mind by going through it. Amen. So no man has ascended to heaven. Hey, no man has ascended to heaven. But Paul, you are saying we shall go to heaven. So we are going to a place where no man has ascended. Did you remember our message you preached on heaven and the chambers of heaven and the regions of heaven? Amen. <laughs> I was reading a, a book, the book of Acts, when Peter was talking the book of Acts. He says, even David died and we have got this Parker with us, has not ascended to heaven. Have you read that? Ah, Acts chapter 2. He says, we have got the Parker of David and he, says, he has not ascended to heaven. Yeah. You want to go with other people. You know the problems. You have a problem. You say, no, 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 no. Heaven is not just for me. That's how much he loves you. Yeah. But he says, we are sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has placed us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And can you continue reading that as I look for this scripture? Continue reading that. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. To meet the Lord in the air. There, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We shall we ever be with the Lord? With the Lord. After we leave this earth, we shall ever be with who? The Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with this word. I'm comforting you. <laughs> Heaven is your place. Yeah. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like trouble. We shall be called out to go to heaven. And we shall give heaven a purpose of existence. A purpose of creation. But Israel shall give this earth a purpose for creation. You love the Lord Jesus? Uh -huh. Can you read Acts chapter 2 verse 34? Those are the questions I want us to ask ourselves. And there is God, we love you because your word is wonderful. Acts chapter verse 34. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit down on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. David has not ascended up to. No, that's not Simon Shiveka, that is the scriptures. David has not ascended up to where? I was reading a very interesting story in the Bible that long after long after Elijah had gone up to where? Where did Elijah go? Heaven. That's what we call heaven. But he's not, he didn't go where you are going. Don't look at me strangely. We have the first heaven, second heaven and third heaven, right? 
The Bible says no man has ascended to heaven. Can you read for us? John 3.13. The last, last verse. God has kept the people, but the heaven that is supposed to be your inheritance, it is awaiting you. If this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have another one in heaven, eternal. John 3.13 And no man has ascended up to heaven. Now that's Jesus, that's not me. Yes. That no man has done what? Ascended up to heaven. Oh Jesus, Elijah went to heaven. But he that came down from heaven. The one who came down from heaven, this Jesus. Even the Son of Man. Even the Son of Man. Which is in heaven. We found another scripture that says Jesus. Jesus said no man has ascended to heaven. We found in Acts chapter 2 verse 34. David has not ascended to heaven. We found Samuel did not come from heaven. He was seen arising from the earth. <laughs> Thank you. We found when Jesus Christ died. The Bible says where did he go? Where did he go? Mm -mm. Let's, I think I like it. Iko Ivi. When Jesus Christ Mary met Mary Magdalene, what did he tell Mary? Don't touch me because I've not. So where did he go? Thank you. Praise the Lord. You love him? Amen. Where did he go? Did Jesus Christ receive a body change in heaven? When he was met in the evening, he said, I've not gone to heaven. But he told who? The thief. Today you'll be with me in the paradise. paradise. Now we are together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now let me repeat. When Mary wanted to touch him, he said, don't touch me because I've not ascended to you. When did he ascend? After resurrection. At what time? Did Jesus ascend to heaven? 50 days, 40 days after, or he had already ascended and then he came back and then he went. Praise the Lord, I love him with all my heart. He said, Mary, don't touch me, I've not ascended to heaven. Later on, on the eighth day, he came and told Thomas, now touch me. What had happened? He had already ascended to heaven. To show the Father he has paid every price that was needed. When he said it is finished, the word finished in the courts and the judge, they use the same word called tetelestai. Tetelestai in Greek means, translated finished, means the sentence has fully been served. Amen. So when he said tetelestai, not can not get the sty. When he said tetelestai, he was saying the sentence has been served. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when we go to business, the same word tetelestai means the dead or debt. Dead has fully been paid. It is also used finished. Tetelestai. In the military, the word tetelestai is also used, finished. It means the battle is completely won. Amen. So Jesus presents to you three tetelestai. Yes. In the court of law and the magistrate, the sentence is completely served. Amen. In business, he, everything has already been paid. Amen. In military, the battle is completely won. Amen. He had to go to the Father. Amen. When he came down, he told Thomas, can you touch me? He did told Mary, don't touch me, I've not ascended. So where are you coming from? He told the thief on the cross, I'll go with you, you'll be with me in paradise. And then when he went down there, the Bible says he went and preached to the souls that were in prison. And there he found people as well. Right? What was that position called? It was called the bosom of Abraham. That paradise where all testament people are is called the bosom of Abraham. That is where Lazarus was. 
Sasa mimi niliandika I didn't write it in the scriptures. It's in the scriptures. The bosom of Abraham. And when he went to that paradise he didn't go up. He told this young man I will be with you in paradise and he went down. But Paul says I was caught up in the third heaven. Where was a paradise in the days of Adam? Was it on earth or in heaven? Does the Bible say that overcoming shall eat the tree of life that is in the paradise of God? Where was the tree of life? So where was the paradise? <coughs> where is your paradise? <coughs> I'm saying so much. Your paradise is where? Amen. Their paradise, the bosom of Abraham, right here. It is a dimension where God has blessed his people and kept them. Amen. Think about those things. <coughs> Let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, it says, is it 20 really? Yeah. yeah, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. These are the people who were killed for the testimony of Jesus. Is that tribulation period? Yes. Is that tribulation period? Yes. Thank you. And who had not worshipped the beast? That goes to show the beast will be there in the time of the tribulation. Yeah. So these people are beheaded for the testimony of Jesus, lived in the time of the beast. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Did they go to heaven? No, I'm asking you. Did they go to heaven? No. They lived with Jesus a thousand years where? And what does the Bible say? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So the first resurrection has people that were beheaded. People who never had the mark of the beast. Who stood for the testimony of Jesus Christ. They are resurrected and they are going into what? Now listen to me. Is that resurrection there recorded? What makes you think there is a resurrection there? Uh -uh. What makes you think there is a resurrection there? Because the Bible says they were beheaded and then they stood. So it means there was a resurrection called the first. And this first resurrection has our people going where? In the millennium to reign with Christ. Now, Sister Yano, follow this closely. If these people were killed and beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ, and because they never had the mark of the beast, they received the mark of the beast, amen? And they were killed. Then they are entering into the millennium. There must have been another resurrection that took place before this resurrection. Yes. Is that true? Because this resurrection is connected to the people who are killed in the tribulation. Amen. And it's called the first resurrection. In other words, so the first resurrection recorded in Revelation 20 verse 4 is not the resurrection that Paul says, I tell you a mystery. Amen. 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 There must have been a previous resurrection so the fact that it's called first resurrection, it does not consider a secret, mysterious resurrection of the body of Christ. Amen. Honest, must you get that? There is no way these people would have understood there is another resurrection before this resurrection. It was here to them because it was the mystery of Christ revealed to Paul. Amen. They would have known and that's why say, hey, I tell you a mystery. Mystery means hidden wisdom. Oh God, even if you are too. Amen. That you are saved by the hidden wisdom and your salvation was a mystery. Ephesians 3, 5. 
not revealed to the sons of men. Ephesians 3 9 going down, hid in God. Amen. Never made manifest. These people that were hid in God, they have got their resurrection also. It is a mystery. Amen. Not the prophesied, not the promised. That's why Paul alone says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. Are you the candidates of the first resurrection or the mystery resurrection? Because if you are the candidate of the first resurrection, you will be cut off your head. Yes. You will stay in the days of the mark of the beast. Yes. You will stand there and reign with Christ a thousand years. Then you will not be the one that is going to be caught up by the trump of God to be with Christ forever in heaven. Hey, give him a hand clap as I take this one, amen. Am I speaking to a people that heaven is reserved for? So I want to ask you a question. Is Jesus Christ going to put his foot down here while he's coming for you? Why? Because we shall meet him in there. Yeah. So the one that came down in Revelation 10 and put his foot on the sea and his foot on the land. Was he coming for you? No. Because we shall meet him in there. Yeah. Isn't that true? So Revelation 10 and I saw another mighty angel come down. Was he coming for you? He doesn't have to come. We go. Amen. Because if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead Amen. dwelleth in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body Amen. and you shall meet the Lord in the air. He doesn't have to come. He has done something in my heart that will take me up there. Amen. So when you tell me Revelation 10 was the seventh sin, nonsense. That is true. Amen. So someone comes and says, you know what? It will take the seven unknown thunders to give you rapturing faith. You man who is killed where Branham. Why did you why did you read it in the scriptures? So when you go to a church, you ask them, so what are the seven thunders? Oh, seven thunders is rapturing faith. Seven thunders are the voice of the seven church ages. Seven thunders are the seven virtues. A lot of it is trash. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in you. You are perfect. So the people will be raptured and the people who have been, who have been put under what? Fivefold ministry. Who have got the fullness of the measure of Christ. Amen. Amen. Who are also perfect. Amen. By what? Fivefold ministry. Amen. When he ascended upon heaven, he made a people that will be blameless. Those are the people that will be raptured. He doesn't have come to the earth. The moment he comes to the earth, he's coming for Israel. Amen. Amen. So what is the difference between the seventh trumpet and the last trump? The seventh trumpet ushers in the millennium. Amen. The last trump takes you up. Amen. It is the end of the two programs and the beginning of another. Amen. So the last trump will take you up into heaven. The last trump will take you into heaven. Amen. It is what is called the trump of God. But the seventh trumpet will take them into the millennium. The kingdoms of this earth will become the kingdoms of our Lord. Amen. Now, Luke chapter 4. And Jesus Christ was taken up by Satan and he tempted him and he told him, if you worship me, I'll give you the what? The Bible says, he took Jesus up and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. And he wanted to give it to Jesus. And Jesus refused. But when the seventh trumpet blows, he takes them. Amen. Amen. The same kingdom the devil wanted to give to Jesus. He refused. But at the seventh trumpet, they are in the hands of Jesus. That is the millennium. That can never be Revelation 10, 7. Now, your mystery, I think you are not getting it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. What are we saying? When it's called the first resurrection, it does not mean it is the only resurrection. The very resurrection in an order, the Bible says, Jesus was the first fruit of those who, that slept. Yes. And you, mystery resurrection, not the first resurrection. Amen. 
You know all of you are supposed to stand and dance around and go back to sit. <laughs> that look at how mysterious I am. That even God had a program for me called Mystery Resurrection. Until Paul could not tell everyone. He said, hey, now I tell you. I want to ask a question. If the resurrection was known, this resurrection was the ordinary resurrection. Why did Paul say, behold, I tell you a mystery. I tell you a secret. I want to show you scriptures that show people are waiting for a resurrection. Okay. How many of you know that the Pharisees believed in the resurrection? Did they believe in the mystery resurrection? Why? It was still a mystery and it had been revealed by Paul. Amen? So they believed in some form of a resurrection. Is the resurrection that the Pharisees believed in the one that Paul talked about until the Pharisees released him? Paul was standing between the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And the Sadducees does, do not believe in the resurrection. They told Jesus in Matthew chapter 22. Is it 22 or 23? Right there. That there was a woman, you are saying that you believe in the resurrection. There was a woman that was married seven times. And then the brother died. And then they lived in marriage. Another one died. So at the end, whose wife would she be? Because you are believing there is a resurrection. We are the said there is no resurrection. Then Jesus told them, you do err, for you do not know the power of scripture. There... There will not be marriage. They will live as angels. But when it comes to Pharisees, Paul was going to be killed. And he realized that guys said they don't believe in the resurrection and the Pharisees are the resurrection. Then he knew how to exit. He said, that is Acts chapter 23 verse 8. For the Sadducees said there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. But the Pharisees confess both. So Paul told them, brothers, I'm here for the same hope you have. Amen. I've seen angels. I've seen spirit. I believe in the resurrection. God. Huh? Believe in the resurrection? Then the Pharisees told Paul, told the guys, leave this man. It is possible he must have seen an angel or a resurrection. Let him go. They believed in the resurrection. Amen. Was it the same resurrection you believe in? No. Then, we met a man by the name Job. Job, in chapter 19, verse 25 and 27. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand on the latter day upon the earth, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see the Lord. Whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold him, and not another, though my reins be consumed with, within me. So Job believed a resurrection. And he said, the Lord shall stand on the earth. Is that a mystery resurrection? Why? Because it's taking place on earth. And Job said, I will wait here until my change come. So Job believed in the resurrection. Are we together so far? Then in Genesis chapter 23, Abraham, after Sarah died, he went to the Hittites and bought Machpelah for the burial place of Sarah. Abraham was buried there because he believed in a resurrection. Job was also buried in Machpelah, believed in the resurrection. Adam also believed in the resurrection. And they were all buried in Machpelah. History will tell us that. Amen. Jacob was buried in Machpelah. Leah was buried in Machpelah. When Jacob died in Egypt, he was taken to Machpelah. Amen. Because he believed in a resurrection. Amen. Then Joseph stood up and said, I have a lot of things here I wanted to speak about. Let me leave you that. I don't know. Then Joseph stood up and said, I know the Lord is going to visit you. Please don't leave my bones here. Take my bones. They went with the bones because they believed in a resurrection. Amen. And Job is telling us the resurrection was supposed to take place down here on earth. So these people are waiting for a resurrection. What are we calling these people? We are calling them the Old Testament saints with their resurrection. Amen. Then there is a res the same resurrection is going to collect our people we call the messianic people. 
That is Peter, John, and James, and the rest that believed in Jesus. These people will be resurrected. The Old Testament will be resurrected. Then the tribulation saints will be resurrected. To go where? Into the millennium. Amen. Amen. Is a grace you think mm, should have gone to the millennium a little bit. <laughs> Who said you'll be bound? I'm talking to you about your own inheritance. Amen. When you visit Brother So and So, you don't live there. You stay there for a while and go home, isn't it? Because you have your inheritance. You are not going to be bound by anything. But I want to tell you, God created the heaven and the earth. And he created the heaven for you. Amen. Created the earth for the children of Israel. Amen. Now let me say this. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was seen there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Are you seeing it? Amen. Thy people shall awake. That is a resurrection. So all the children of Israel knew there will be a resurrection. Amen. But now Paul says, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. That is a different resurrection. Amen. John chapter 11 verse 23, 24. Jesus said unto her, that is Martha, thy brother shall rise again. Mary said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So this resurrection is called the resurrection of the last day. That is not your resurrection. Your resurrection is a mystery resurrection. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Amen. Are they different? No, you need to tell me. Are they different? If they're not different, then you'll have to be beheaded, then be resurrected, then go into the millennium, then the program of the heaven stopped. On earth today, there are people who will go to heaven. And on earth today, we are people who will, those people will possess the new, the, the people will possess the millennium. Amen. That's why when you read what is called the La Laodicean church, he that overcometh, shall I grant to sit with me on my throne? Then you realize that cannot be you. Because the throne is mentioned. Amen. Amen. He that overcometh, I shall give him a road to rule the nations. Amen. And they shall break before him like shivers. As my father has given me, you shall reign with him. Are you getting the same threats there? Revelation chapter 19, and out of his mouth issued a sharp sword, with it he ruled the nations. Are you there? That says he that has got the key of David. Does the key of David have to do with the kingdom? Yes. Is that you to be given? It says this again. John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. There are two resurrections there. One resurrection is the first resurrection. Another resurrection is the second resurrection. The second resurrection is the resurrection of the wicked. Those people that shall be resurrected to go into judgment. Amen? Amen. The people will be resurrected to go into the millennium. There are people will be resurrected to go into judgment. And there are people will be resurrected that go up to heaven. Don't fail to put them distinctly as the Bible puts them. Amen. There are people will be resurrected to go to heaven. Mystery resurrection. The last trump. There are the people will be resurrected to go into the millennium. And the Bible tells us, and the rest did not until a thousand 
Yes. So there will be a resurrection, the final resurrection. After the final resurrection, then the earth will be cleansed into a new earth and handed over to the right man. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. What is your place? Your place is a new heaven. Amen. And our place is the new earth. Amen. <sighs> ah. Those people are earthy in their minds. They are wondering that because they are told God will stay in heaven and we shall stay on earth. The earth was given to Israel. Amen. And God is going to take it back to them under a promise. I want to give you a question. I want to ask you something. I want us to get to some place where we can because we have uh, we have a lot. So this resurrection that Paul is talking about was not prophesied. Amen. Because the people to whom he is revealing the resurrection were not even spoken of in the Old Testament. Yes. So their prophecy, the Bible says, listen to me, the Bible says the mystery that was hid in God. It means it was not hid in the prophets. You can't get it in the prophets. Amen. You can't get it in the Bible in the Old Testament. If you looked for it in the Old Testament, you couldn't get it. But Paul says it was hid in God. So when he come to reveal that mystery, he revealing to our people, these people should ask a question, how shall we be resurrected? Because we only see two resurrections in the, in the Old Testament. And we see Job is looking forward. David said, I will not suffer my Holy One to see corruption. David knew there will be a resurrection. Job knew there will be a resurrection. Daniel knew there will be a resurrection. Jacob, Isaac, and Joseph, and, and even Adam knew there will be a resurrection. The Pharisees believed there is a resurrection. Mary, Martha believed there is a resurrection. But the resurrection we've read that the Bible says, those who have done good will enter in the resurrection. Is that your resurrection? What is your resurrection made of? Made of what Jesus did, not what you do. But these people will be resurrected depending on what they did. Say amen. amen. So what we are calling the first resurrection has how? We have this first resurrection with three groups of people. Old Testament saints. Amen. The Messianic believers, including Peter, James and John and Lazarus. Amen. And the tribulation saints. Are you trying to tell me, Brother Simon, we shall be resurrected going to the rapture and they wait for seven years before they are resurrected? That is exactly what I'm saying. Because... They have to wait. They cannot resurrect because their domain has not yet come to an end until the blowing of the seventh trumpet. Amen. So they can't resurrect the same time you are being resurrected. Where will they go? They are not the members of the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 7 says there was a church in the wilderness. Israel is called a church in the wilderness. Then there was a church that Simon Peter was told upon this, I'll build my church. Then there is a church that Paul calls the body of Christ, the new creature in Christ Jesus. So heaven is for the new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are saved as a Gentile, you would ask a question, Father, some of us are going to die. Sorry for brother Hildebrand that passed on about two, 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 uh, two weeks ago. Some of the saints that have died, where will they go? Will they stay in the earth until when they resurrect, they go into the millennium? But the Father, we have found a promise in the Bible. It says, Hatutalala wote, lakini tutanya kuliwa. Na tutanda kuishi na buwana milele. Kuna kundi la watu wapa ambao watanda jumbi nguni. Na kuna kundi la watu ambao watanjia katika mili kelfu moja. Kwa naema ya kristo, wea utanda juu. Amen. Oh, the Bible says, we are the citizens of heaven, Amen. ambassadors to the earth. Amen. We've come here to do something, and we are seen going away. Amen. And we are not going away by some seven thunders. Seven thunders are to Israel. Amen. Because he, shall, he roared as a lion, that means that was a king. Amen. Is the seventh seal blown by Moses and Elijah? No. 
Moses and Elijah will preach. Seventh seal does, seventh trumpet does not preach. Seventh trumpet ends a program that began with Adam. Amen. 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 Where did it begin with Adam? I can hear someone politely say, hey, from the way you are saying, it looks like Abraham, Adam, and the rest are earthy. God did something in Adam. He entered into the all the people who are lost in Adam, then separated the people, Amen. put a wall, and said there is a people in you, Adam, that will go to heaven. Amen. There are people in you, Adam, that will remain on earth. Amen. Then he told Abraham, come over here. I show you. Look at up there in the sky. Those are the stars of the firmament. Look on the earth. That is the dust of the earth. Amen. The dust of the earth is Israel. The stars of heaven is the seed of Abraham, justified without works, Amen. but justified by faith Amen. in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Ah, let me know why I say that. You're saying we are going to heaven? There is a song that says, We are going up. We are going up. We are going up in the first resurrection. I'm not going up in the first resurrection. I'm going up in the mystery resurrection. Amen. First resurrection are the people who are beheaded. Tribulation saints. Sini maandiko. Lakini, nini sumetambo tumepoteza muda mwingi pila kukusoma maandiko. Someone just says, I'm going up in the first resurrection. You, you don't want to go to the Bible in Revelation 20 to find out. First resurrection are those who are beheaded. Those people who resisted the mark of the beast. And the mark of the beast, when it starts taking place, you won't be here. Amen. And you don't want to take children to school because they've got the mark of the beast. You don't want to buy a computer. You don't want to buy a television to watch the news on what is happening in the world. Because someone said you will shoot it with a shotgun. Ask that person in Kishwako in Missouri. At the television, you know, you shoot it with a shotgun in Missouri. So you shoot TV. Why don't you put off television You say you want to shoot it? Someone in Branham, I don't hate him. I love him. I just see a lot of work that will be banned. Those false claims have to be banned. Amen. So that he can be saved. Yes. Let these people, white supremacists, come to scare you around here. Just because he has got a white skin. Someone was asking, if Adam means red, what would have been the complex, the complexion of, of Jacob? To differentiate Jacob from Isaac, one of them was red. That's why he was called Adam. So Jacob must have been... It doesn't matter the color of your skin. You could be yellow, white, black, that is irrespective. You could be white skin and your heart is dark. Like the wing of a raven. And you could be black and your heart is black. You could be white and your heart is white. But the opposite is not different. You could be white with a dark heart. You could be black with a dark heart, but you could also be black with a white heart Amen. that has been cleansed by Jesus. Amen. Amen. Then it makes you want to, to, to plead yourself to look brown. I was surprised when I was in the airport. I, I asked my, my interpreter, my friend, what is wrong with this lady? She's white, but she has put on something to make her dark. He said they misses the dark color because they think being so white is not healthy. That's up to them. I'm not, unless I'm sick, I'm healthy in my skin. Amen. And if I'm sick, you will heal me. Amen. Who told you that this skin is the better skin than the others? No. It's just this propaganda in the advertisement. And the most beautiful people are the blue eyes. All of God's creation is beautiful. Amen. The Bible says, I am wonderfully and fearfully made. Amen. Whether you are black or white Amen. or yellow, Amen. you are created by God and for God alone. Someone comes and says, no, I want you to remain like that. No! You want to think you are preserving your life because you are calling a serpent seed. We've discovered, what are you going to do? We've discovered you are not serpent seed, you are the children of God. What are you going to do with the slaves you are tying on your waist? We are free, free indeed. Amen. Whomever that the son makes free is free indeed. Amen. What are you going to do? Praise the Lord. Amen. First resurrection, not your resurrection. Mysterious resurrection, you are resurrection. Amen. The trump of God, the last trump is what translates you from here. Amen. But the last, can you read the, the three trumpets? The, the, the trumpets. Don't
don't forget one of the things I said. The same kingdoms. Can you read for me Daniel chapter 2 verse 44? Daniel chapter 2 verse 35. Daniel chapter 2 verse 35 and Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. Are we together that Israel never preached translation? Eh? Do we realize they were looking forward for a resurrection not a translation? Amen. Amen. Because the mystery of the translation was only revealed to Paul. Amen. 35 and 44. Daniel 2, 35. Yes. Then was the iron the clay, the brass, the silver, yeah. and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. What broke that image? A stone. Mm. And continue. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain. The stone that destroyed the image became a big mountain. So let us see what is the interpretation of that. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of the heavens set up a kingdom. Can you just go behind a little bit? Just before that. 43. Yeah. And whereas thou sowest iron mixed with the mary clay, they shall mingle themselves. Yeah. And the seed of the man but they shall not cleave one to another, yeah. even as iron is not mixed with the clay. Yes. And in the days of these kings, in the days of those kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. God shall set up what? A kingdom. What does Revelation eleven fifteen say? When the seventh trumpet sounded, the voices that said the kingdoms of this earth have become the kingdoms of our Lord. So the seventh trumpet is connected to that stone coming down to the earth. Amen. And that was a kingdom. Amen. Read. A kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Shall not be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Yes. But it shall break in pieces. Yes. And consume all these kingdoms. Yes. And it shall stand forever. Shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. Are you seeing the kingdom is called a stone? You know, we have this kind of nonsense. I had a friend of mine, a good preacher, who stood when, when President Trump took over as the president. He started preaching Trump as the last Trump. Now, what are the you again? Let me say it in English. If you can listen, you listen to it. When you call Trump the last Trump, what did you have in mind, my friend? And he took all the time telling the people, he read in the book of Isaiah, telling the people, eh? That God hides in names as much as that really true. And he said, you know, Trump is the last Trump. It is very surprising that the Bible calls him Trump. He does not even the ministry, the mystery resurrection and the last Trump. I mean, and the, the seventh Trump. So, so Trump, Mac, I need to go, McDonald and McDonald. Donald is called Trump. And somebody is consuming the time of the believers, telling them, that Trump means the last Trump. And others call him Cyrus. That is going to command. The, uh, <laughs> he's going to do what? He's going to give a degree for the rebuilding of, the new, of Jerusalem. And then the man was defeated in politics. So what happened to your Trump that was the last Trump? <laughs> what happened to your Cyrus? Forget this nonsense. Looking at the nations is not connected to our rapture. Amen. 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 It is not connected at all. Amen. Don't allow Stalin to say amen alone. People wondering. You say amen to the word. Amen. amen. So the last Trump, thank you, Sister Grace. Then the last Trump, then the last Trump realized, no, this time it's Biden. Mm -hmm. So if it was the last Trump that he said that God set up, why did he get defeated? Amen. If Biden stole the votes, why didn't God protect? Because God is not interested in your politics. Yes. God has got only one program that keeps him on earth, and that is you. Yes. 
When the rapture takes place, he opens another program that is suspended. And that is Israel and the nations. Amen. Even in this country, in the days of the election, I had another brother. I just looked at him and said, guys have a problem. Because that time, there was a jubilee and a cord. And this brother sat me down. I said, shame on him. He sat me down and said, you see, this one is called cord. It binds. And this one is called Jubilee, it freezes. Then the same brother today, his party has left Jubilee. It is another party. So what becomes your party? Forget the politics. Amen. Don't connect some words someone has tried to, to, to coin to bring it to the word of God. Amen. Forget these stories. Another came and told me, Brother Simon, you know even the dove that the Jubilee used was actually made by a brother, a pastor in the message. So what do you want that to do me to me? He was given employment like another person and told them, use the word jubilee and I'm going to make the emblem of a dove. Nothing wrong with that. Is there anything wrong? There's nothing wrong with that. Someone tells you cannot even a woman cannot work because she has just keep at home. Then he said they took the works of women, men and gave it to the women. They didn't take the works of women and gave it to men. Women qualify to be police officers, to be anything on earth. Amen. Don't know, keep them down, they can't even teach. Amen. Then our brother calls his wife, she's a nurse. And then the wife cannot even, because he wants to stay with the tap teaching. Then the wife is in town, she has been told to stop working because a woman is just to keep her at home. And then she's walking when she could have even had a clean shoe in her feet. But the husband has told her to stop working. Then 15 years ago, the same brother left the message. What a loss! Because you want to peel the women. Women is the greatest gift that God ever gave us. And that's why the church is a woman. Israel is a woman. Israel is called the daughters of Zion. You are called a husband like your wife. This is a great mystery. There is the mystery woman, which is a church. Amen. And there is the normal woman, which is Israel. Amen. You are the mystery woman. Amen. And your mystery, mystery woman has to go up. Amen. There is a program for that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When Jesus stood up and said, salvation is of the Jews. In John chapter 4 verse 22. Is that scripture still the same? What has happened to that scripture? Salvation was confirmed to Israel. But when Paul came in, in, in Titus chapter 1, maybe verse 2, he says, The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Amen. It is not confined to Israel now. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Amen. You can't restrict people. And tell people, don't go... <coughs> Come out of California. You are relocating. You are called the scheme. Can you call the Ministry of Resettlement? So he's trying to resolate, relocate people from California. By the way, do you know how big California is? Our sister is there. Uh, how big is California? Four hundred and twenty-three, nine hundred and seventy square kilometers. And Kenya is 580 square kilometers. So California is nearly the, as big as Kenya. Because California is supposed to be bigger than Uganda. Then someone just comes up one morning and tells people, get out. Those who are in Hayeka in California, get out. Those who are in, uh, in uh, what is the name, where, uh, down there. Not Trukana, your home, where you come from. Maraquet. Those who are in Maraquet, get out. And those who are in Maralal, get out. And those who are in Blarangi, get out. California is going to sink. What makes you think Indiana or Kentucky is better? What makes this place better is the children of God who are here. Amen. That's the only difference. Amen. That is the reason God is obligated to you. Amen. I come to tell you, get out of California. Amen. Until when our brother comes in California, our brother came when we were in the church and he was working in California. And then the brother, what are you doing in California? And the brother tucked his tongue and said, you know, maybe there is some work God is doing for us. This brother is from Western, we had settled, you know him. We had settled in California. People are condemning because he lives in California because the prophet said, come out of California. Now the other day, Barry Green said, I've told Billy Paul, be very careful, don't die. Because if you die before the sharks move out of California, our critics will be at our necks. So they know. 
You are trying to help God? Don't help him. Believe him. Amen. If the same God would destroy the army of Egypt for a natural firstborn, what more will he do for you, the spiritual firstborn of God? If he destroyed Egypt and told the children of Israel, I want you to hang around here. After this, the, the name of that place was called Rai something. Hang around here. Wait for them guys come. Amen. Let them come. I want you to see oh. you are fast. You are yeah. past oppression disappear in the water. Yeah. And the Bible says, and the children of Israel yeah. saw every oppressor destroyed. Yeah. That's the reason why God created the Red Sea. Mungu wa kuumba bahari ya shamu ya kukuangamiza. Aliumba bahari ya shamu ya kuangamiza adui wako. Kwa sababu kuna adui mwingine anajaribu kukufata. Usha tolewa na damu ya mwanakondoo, lakini kuna adui anakufata. Mungu anasema wacha kufate, nitamaliza katika bahari ya shamu. Amen. Amen. You know brothers, when you are sitting around and you thought, my goodness, I thought this thing was delivered. I was delivered out of this thing. How come it's, follow it's not following you? God is luring it. He wants to destroy it. Yes, yes. He wants to destroy whatever that has been. I want you to believe that with all your heart. Amen. I want you to believe to mean so much to God Amen. that Jesus Christ himself died for you. Amen. And I want to tell you, you are the reason of the 2,000 year period. Amen. The resurrection was called the last day resurrection. Your resurrection is not the last day resurrection. Last day to them is in connection with the period God gave them. I want to ask you a question. I'm so happy I'm finishing fast enough. I'm glad. I'm not finishing fast enough. I have so much that sometimes I just have to stop. You people give me company when you study your own Bible. Sometimes when a, your preacher is reading a certain scripture and you read it yesterday, you know how that smile takes a steady yes, yes. journey from the heart <laughs> up to the face and it, it covers the whole face. Then you are sitting like, I read that yesterday. I got it. And you feel nice. And you say, I had not gotten that. Now I'm getting it. Amen. Amen. Then you become, my, you become my fellow brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen? Amen. If we study the Bible, all of us, we shall be the same people. I know standing, I'm a pastor. I'm big, I'm big, big in which way? I'm just a brother saved by grace. Amen. Like you are. Amen. Like all of you sisters and brothers. That's all there is. We can't all stand here and minister the word. Someone has to sit. With the love of God in your heart. Amen. But you show forth what you stand for. Oh, yes. Amen. I am of the mysteries resurrection. Don't preach to me first the resurrection. Another brother told me, I hear you are preaching controversial things. I told him, come face me. Sit down. We shall take tea for you in the house. But don't sit us down up to two. I want to sleep. That's how controversial I am when I'm preaching first resurrection different from your resurrection. Amen. And I've proved to you it's different. You shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the sky. Amen. And I've shown you Revelation 10, he comes to the earth. It doesn't matter how someone twists it. It doesn't matter how someone comes and says, and I, I can hear him, It doesn't matter how someone says, I can hear him getting inside of me and settling down. Forget that nonsense. Amen. There was only one man that was the fullness of God, and that's the man Christ Jesus. Amen. The rest of us are born by him. There is no any other man who has been exalted above him. That's just cultic. That's why we don't believe those things. Let's go to Revelation 8. Yeah, I'm saying that we are finishing it in a short while yet at the same time. See, my time has already run. Uh, Revelation chapter 8. It says, let's go begin verse 7. This angel that came under the seventh seal had seven trumpets. I want to say this, I'm not going to explain, but I want to leave this with you. The seven trumpets is a period that deals with the last three and a half years. And the seven seals are the, the period that deals with the first three and a half years. When you bring them all together, you have got seven year period of tribulation. I repeat, the seven trumpets deal with the last three and a half years. The seals deal with the first three and a half years. In between, the devil comes down at the very onset of the trumpets. The seven seals 
Listen to me. The seven seals is God showing the chastisement of Israel for rejecting him. And the seven churches of the book of Revelation, it's a time and a season of the people that are waiting for him. And that is what we find in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25, Jesus is opening about people waiting for him to come. Matthew 24 is the seven seals in Revelation chapter 6. We went with you one by one. Do you remember that? Matthew 24, I repeat. Matthew 24 equals to Revelation 6, the seals. Matthew 25 deals with the people in expectation. And those people are the people expecting Jesus, the second coming. It's not the rapture coming. Matthew 24 does not deal with the rapture. Rapture could only be revealed after Paul got the revelation. Amen. Matthew 24 is the three questions that the people ask the Lord Jesus. When shall these things be? What is the sign of your coming and the end of the world? When Jesus comes to Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, 30, and 31. And then it shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in the sky. Then shall all the tribe of the earth mourn. Right? It is not going to be secret in that sense of the word. They shall all see him. So when you take the two clouds and put them there, none of those clouds don't feed anything. They don't even feed the second coming. I'm saying the cloud of the Branamites does not feed the second coming, does not even feed the rapture coming. If it was the second coming, it would have taken place in Israel, not in Arizona. Amen. If it's the rapture coming, McDonald would have not even captured the picture Amen. of the secret coming of the Lord. Amen. So the cloud is nonsense. Amen. Thank you. Time to hard. Kabisa. Your cloud in Inin. If you try to feed in Israel, yeah, the coming of the Lord takes place in America and in Netanyahu and Olmad and are required here of struggling with the Palestinians on every side. <laughs> and the second, the second coming is happening in some Tucson, Arizona. Okay, so it is the secret coming of the Lord. Secret coming of the Lord and Magnolan looking for UFOs can capture it and put it in a the magazine. Then how much of that is a secret coming? So what is the cloud? The cloud was not natural. The cloud was not supernatural. The cloud was artificial. Yes. I repeat, it was not as a result of a natural rising of the moisture in the sky because that was too far for a cloud to appear. It was not supernatural because it was not the coming of the Lord. Amen. What was it? Artificial, it was a missile. So a missile is the coming of the Lord for some people, not for me. No wonder you had to wait for him to come from Arizona to forgive you. Jesus, forgive me. Amen. If you are in Christ, you are a new creature. Amen. If you believe him, you and your house, you shall be saved. Amen. 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 Believe Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 With behold, I tell you a mystery. Amen. And for Israel is the mystery of God that ends with the seventh trumpet. What is the difference? Amen. And someone comes and says, you know, Brother Samuel, you're making a mistake. Revelation 10, 7 is a different trumpet from Revelation 11, 15. And ask him, Revelation 10, 7, is it a sounding or when he shall? So the question is, when was he shall? When did he shall? 11.15 11, is when he did shall. Yes. And the kingdoms that was in the hands of the devil. Yes. He couldn't do much because the stone had come. And he crushed the four kingdoms, according to Nebuchadnezzar. And then the stone grew into a big mountain on earth. Amen. 
And the Bible says, the saints of the Most High shall possess the kingdom that will have no beginning and the end. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 22, there was a man called Jeconiah of the lineage of David. God cast him and said, no one shall sit on the throne. Until when Jesus came and Gabriel announced, for God shall give him the throne of his father David. It was jubilation and hallelujah. Because finally, God has lifted up what? The curse on Jeconiah. Now someone can sit on the throne. Now, let me tell you a question. Ask a question. Do you know John came announcing the kingdom of God in Matthew chapter 3? Yes. Do you know Matthew chapter 4, Jesus announced the kingdom? Yes. Matthew chapter 10, the disciples announced the kingdom? Yes. Matthew 21, the king was rejected? Yes. Until now, Revelation eleven fifteen, yes. the king is now coming? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So the seventh trumpet is kingdom trumpet. Has nothing to do with Moses and Elijah. If you say the seventh trumpet is Moses and Elijah, you are going back in the same trash of naming the holders of the seventh trumpet. Now it's not Branham, it's Moses and Elijah. It's none of them. Those are angels. And I saw Moses standing with one of the trumpets. So the Bible said, I want to ask you, did John know Moses? Huh? Yeah, wow, you have a nice tie. Why? Yeah. On Mount Transfiguration, James, Peter, and James could identify that is Moses and Elijah. Could Moses and Elijah appeared? Could Moses have appeared in Revelation 10, in Revelation 8, as one of the trumpets, and John did not call him out? He would have said, and I saw seven angels with seven trumpets, and one of them was Moses and Elijah. Verse 4. And the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mixed with the blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were burned up, and the green grass was burned. And the second angel sounded. And the third angel sounded. And the fourth angel sounded. That is verse 12. Then verse chapter 9. And the fifth angel sounded. Then verse 13, Revelation 9, 13. And the sixth angel sounded. And chapter 10, verse, chapter 10, verse 1. And I saw another mighty angel coming down. Revelation 11, 15. And the seventh angel sounded. Revelation 10, 7. When the seventh angel shall begin to sound. Revelation 11, 15. And he sounded. What's the problem? It has to do with the kingdom of Israel. Amen. Let me run fast. My time is up. Read for me very fast. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Very fast. I'm, I'm finishing there. I'm leave something in your mouth. Don't think I forget these things. We just leave them. Suspend. When we come again, we understand them. So when people say someone left Branham, I did. This is the reason. Isn't this the reason? Is it enough reason? Genesis 1.26 And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing. Thank you. I want you to read there. Oh, time is up. Let them have dominion. dominion. So that goes to that was a kingdom on earth. Given to Adam. Adam was given a kingdom. True. Amen. When he was given a kingdom, that kingdom had an area where that kingdom ran. Are we together? Amen. I'm just reading this to help you. I want you to open Revelation chapter 15. No, no, no. Genesis chapter 15. As I read this scripture and then just mention a few things. Then we come to a close. Are you in Genesis chapter 2? Yeah, I want you to go to, to Genesis chapter 15. While we are reading Genesis chapter 2. Verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed in his nostril the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. So there was Eden. Then there is what is called eastward. And God planted a garden in the eastward. And the Lord God, 
And there he put man whom he had formed. Where was this man Adam? On the eastern part of Eden. To have dominion. He was a king. The program of the earth had actually begun. Amen. Do you understand believers? Amen. The program of the earth begins with dominion of Adam subduing. He is given seed, he is given children. And the program of the earth has begun. The program of the heaven has been suspended. As much as the heaven was the first place to be created. In the, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. When he created the earth, he left heaven and then he concentrated on the earth by creating a man and came on earth to have dominion. And he placed him on the east of Eden. Are we together? Amen. And out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleased unto the side and good for food and tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now listen, verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden from whence it was parted and it became four heads. The name of the first is Pishon. That word passion is a place on earth today. Amen. Showing you the area that God was obsessed with on the whole earth. Amen. Thank you. The name of the first is passion. That is which combats the whole land of Havila. Havila. Where is Havila on earth? Go Google that and you find Havila is not in Hagar. Havila is not in Eldoret. Havila is somewhere in the Middle East. God is showing it that land. God is now putting the first map on earth. And is putting beacons and coordinates on the earth. Amen. And this is the place where Adam is going to rule from. Amen. And this is the same place that God will give Abraham. Amen. Havila, where there is gold. So that is the earth. Amen. Amen. And the gold that is in that land is good. God is doing something here. And there is Delium or Bdelium, but I call it Delium, and the Onyx Stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is that combusted the, the whole land of Ethiopia. Here is written Kush. God is showing you the area of action for the evil powers and the godly powers. And Russia is not here. Kenya is not here. God is giving you the coordinates. The whole land of what? Ethiopia. And that time, Ethiopia was already known at that time. He's saying now, this is that place. A brother was telling us, Kenya was not there. So all of us was Ethiopia. Now sometimes you have to be, the Bible says if you want to post, post yourself in the Lord. So with this Ethiopia, all of it. It is the place. You know, these guys will come and tell you that uh, Africa, between Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania, that area is the cradle of man. Isn't it, Somalim? They say they found some skulls, so many millions old. It's like he came from Africa. Then later on, they come and say the white man is the oldest. So we say, why are you contributing yourself? You come and tell us there is a man called Sinjandropas. Sinjand means black. That was the first man. So where were you? You are telling us you are serpent seed even you Sandis? <laughs> and the name of the third river is Heidekel. And that is which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Do we have Euphrates today? Do we have Heidekel today? Do we have Ethiopia today? Do we have Assyria today? Isn't that the place where Adam was living? Where the dominion was supposed to come from? Oh, you got it? So if there is another man going to come, watch that place. Stop watching Ra. Read for us. That's our last scripture we close. Oh my God. Shall you our time up? Okay. You just give me 10 minutes to our time, right? Yeah, I, I need to have a timekeeper who's telling me this time. I would love that too. Yeah, go ahead. Genesis 15. When God is promising to give Abraham a land. <clears throat> uh, 
After these things. Which one? Which verse? I want you to go to verse seven. Verse seven. seven. Yes. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of Chaldeans. Yes. To give thee this land to inherit. So Abraham was called from the Ur of Chaldeans. Yes. And then he was told, Walk up. I want to show you land. So Abraham began walking, marking the same territory where Adam walked. Right. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, He's telling him, I'm going to give you a land. Amen? Yes. And he said unto him, Take me an ape of three years old, a shikot of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all this, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcass, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and a horror of dead darkness fell upon him. Yes. And he said unto him, unto Abram, No surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for four hundred years. And also the nations whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with a great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. As I want to go to verse 18. Verse 18. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt. What is the river of Egypt? The river of Egypt is the river Nile. Yes. God is now pointing out to Abraham mm -hmm. that I'm going to give you the river, your land from the river of Egypt Amen. up to where? Under the great river. Up to the great river of what? Euphrates. Of Euphrates. Yes. Has Euphrates now been mentioned? The same place where Adam lived? So when God is telling Adam, Abraham, I will give you this land. Was there a person who was a possessor of that land before the fall? Yes. Who was that person? Was that person a ruler? Yes. Now, is, uh, uh, oh my God. Is Abraham going to produce a ruler? Yes. Is the son of David going to come from this tribe? Yes. Are they going to rule in the same place? Yes. Is that the place where evil powers and good powers are going to be tested? Is there where a Macedon is going to be fought? Amen. Did we find a name called Assyria? In the book of Revelation. Amen? Now, I want to ask you a question. Where is Mount Ararat? That was Assyria. Do we have a country today called Assyria? No. We have Syria, but we used to have Assyria. Which later on is where we have Turkey and the neighboring countries. And Turkey is where they will tell you that is where Ararat is. Even Noah could not go, the ark of Noah could not go beyond that place that had already been. There were parameters on that land. That was a spiritual land. <laughs> and I will give you this land. The first person to have that land is who? <laughs> I have now my eight minutes. Who is the first one to be given that land? So Abraham has been told, come out of the U of the Chaldeans or Chaldeans. So he's going to a place called Haran. Where is Haran? Haran is not very far, it's the same place where Mount Ararat was. And Abraham is traveling, going like this. And he has crossed River Euphrates, which was on the east of Eden. Amen. So he has crossed River Euphrates, he is going up to Aaron. And the place where he's going to be is not different from where the ark of Noah stopped. God was mapping up the land. Amen. And while he stands there, he has already marked the land going up there. When he stands up there, what happens? God now tells him, I will give you the land from the river of 
Egypt, which is down here, up to Euphrates, which is down here. So there is a triangle land Amen. given to Abraham. Amen. And that's what Adam had. Do you see why we are talking about the mystery of God and the mystery of Christ? Amen. Then, did Adam lose the title deed of the land? Will that land, title deed come? If it's coming, is it coming to a heavenly people or earthly people? Amen. Huh? Oh, yes. You go and look in the Google who has the title deed of Kenya. You won't find it. Go and find out who has the title deed of Uganda, of South Africa, of America. America, the president of America are the CEOs of a private company owned by someone. And that's how American dollar is not their money. You know that. You know they pay. They are renting it. But the kingdoms of this earth will become the kingdom of the man who has already raptured me and has come down to fight for Israel. Then all those places, when we go to Matthew, uh, Genesis chapter 25, and that place called Havilah, that we find in the book of Genesis, Ishmael lived there. Huh? God was already marking the place. Abraham, I'm going to this land from here to there. This is exactly where Adam lived. I'm finishing. Amen. Then the seventh trumpet brings back the land. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The seventh trumpet brings back the land. Amen. Amen. What is the area that God is obsessed with? Up there. Amen. You see why people are looking at Why are you looking for Hayeka here? Hayeka does not even exist here. Look for these coordinates of God. When God said in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 8, when God divided the nations, of the Gentiles. He did it according to the number of the children of Israel. We talked with you about 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Amen. Amen. Did we talk about that? Amen. You people, you are going to heaven. Amen. And that's the reason the devil cannot stay in heaven. Amen. I want to tell you, don't tell someone you are going to heaven because you are running away. Go are going to heaven because heaven is your home. Amen. Don't tell me. The devil is going to hell because he's too evil. Tell him the devil is going to hell because the honor of heaven is coming. Amen. Amen. The difference between the seventh trumpet and the last trump is seven years in between. Amen. You go up, they resurrect to go in the kingdom. Amen. Finally, it's a question. How many did the devil, has the devil ruled the earth? Ruled this earth through the nations of the earth? Amen. Amen. When Daniel was praying, did he pray and the prince of Persia withstood him for 21 days until Michael came? Is Michael connected with the wars of Israel? Will Michael be somewhere fighting for Israel to win the war? Where, what did he, what did the Gabriel tell Daniel? I'm going and after I've gone back, the prince of Greece will come. And the Greece was a kingdom down here on earth. Senor, Persia was a kingdom down here on earth after Babylon had ended. These are the kingdoms that oppressed Israel. But this kingdom shall be destroyed by the stone. And the kingdom shall go to Jesus under the seventh trumpet. Amen. This last trump is not called last because there was the first. Paul never dealt with the trumpet, first trumpet. He only dealt with the trumpet that marks the end of the mystery of your salvation. And that trumpet ends God's dealing with Israel and starts things that will usher in into the millennium. Have you seen the difference? Amen. I want to ask you a question as we finish. How many kingdoms have oppressed Israel? Just say it. Just say it randomly. You're finishing my minutes. How many? He says three. You're not going to be given anything after you say the right answer. Israel 
Israel shall be trodden down until the times of the Gentiles. Times of the Gentiles that began, that we commonly know, began in the book of Daniel, the Babylonian. That's not exactly what happened. Israel has been in bondage. When they came out, they were told, when you are going out, you are going to meet seven nations. That is Deuteronomy chapter 7. There were seven nations in their land. Did I say seven nations? Yes. Amen. These seven nations represented seven kingdoms that will oppress Israel. The devil will oppress Israel through these kingdoms. And that's why they have to be smitten by the rock because they are not godly kingdoms. Amen. So he was influencing this kingdom against Israel. And these are the destroyers of the earth. The honor is there. The first oppressing kingdom of Israel was which one? Why don't you say it? I know why you're not saying it. Your mind are listening, not talking, right? Was Egypt a kingdom? Did they oppress Israel? What other kingdom oppressed Israel and took them out of the land? Mm -mm. Before Babylon. Babylon took only Judah and Benjamin. Assyria. Assyria took the ten tribes. What other kingdom? Babylon. Those are three. Metopassians. Four. Greeks. Five. And then all the divided. Then Rome. Six. Then the Antichrist. Seven. There are not going to be eight kingdoms. This is replicated in the seven nations that was in the land that God gave to Abraham. Seven kingdoms. How many horns, how many heads had the dragon? Seven? And these were kingdoms, right? How many horns has the lamb in the book of Revelation? Lamb. We are going to in Revelation 5. You and the internet, they don't know. But today they're saying they're going to read the Bible. And I saw a lamb with seven eyes and seven horns. So these horns are the powers restricted to the seven enemies of Israel. Because Israel, even right now, Israel is surrounded by, I'm not saying those are the nations, but right now, Israel is surrounded by seven hostile nations. When they came to the land, there were seven nations. There are seven kingdoms. The seventh kingdom will be destroyed by Jesus Christ when he's coming under the seventh trumpet. Amen. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You love the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. You see the, the seventh trumpet has nothing to do with you? Amen. Do you see any person who's claiming it and making a serious mistake? Amen. It is for the program of Israel, not your program. Amen. Like, how did you imagine that God saved you? I want you to imagine that God changes your places. Oh, yes. He wants you to prosper in wherever place you are. Amen. I want to say there was a woman by the name Esther. I was talking to a sister yesterday. If this Esther remained in her own land, would she have become a, a queen? Why? She would not become a queen. Because she came from the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin has nothing to do with thrones. It's only Judah. But when she left this place, God was directing her to a place. A place where she will enter into the throne Amen. as a queen. God knows why he died for you. Amen. And it's him to tell you, this is the reason I died for you. Amen. I want you to believe today as we are here. That salvation is not your works. Amen. Resurrection is not your works. Amen. But there are people whose resurrection, those who have done well, to the resurrection of the righteous. Amen. But our resurrection is all by grace. Amen. And you are the only reason God extended the time Amen. and stopped dealing with Israel Amen. and put in between here a moment to deal with you. Amen. And that's why you are here Amen. saying, I'm saved by grace. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you, you don't even have to someone to say, Amen. your name is now being written. Your name is not going to be written. You are a part of God. Amen. I don't have to write the names of my children if the government wants it. They are my children. Amen. Whether I forget, sometimes I'm calling this one the name of the other one. And it's just there waiting for the name to be called. But he knows my daddy actually is talking about me. Amen. You are the blood of his blood. He died for you to reveal a purpose of your life. Amen. And he has even separated you. And he is telling you, those who are heavenly, Amen. the Lord that came from heaven with a new race Amen. on earth today. Amen. 
May every blessing because of the nation of Israel overtake us. Yet we know we are using it for our schools. We are using the same to take our children to school. We are using the natural thing here. But our heaven, if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have one eternal in heaven. And that's the reason we are here. We can now tell Peter and John, you came and you said the last days is here. The time is at hand. I had not come. Amen. That's why I'm here. That's why it has taken 2,000 years. Amen. That's why you can stand today and say, when God stood and spoke, when Jesus Christ spoke in what you call the Ephesus and told them, I'm coming quickly. If Ephesus church was in the years that have been put down by many people, that word I come quickly wouldn't have been used. It has taken 2,000 years. That's, how quickly is that? Because when he said I come quickly, he never was including our program in that coming. I come as a thief. I'll come to you in the time you are not expecting it. You are not included. That's why they were warning. Being told he that overcomes. They are waiting for that moment. They, those churches, all of them, were in a place called Turkey. They were not in Israel. They were in the same place where the ark of the, the ark of Noah stopped. They were in the same place where Abraham stood. And that is the occupation of God for the last days for Israel. So let no one come with the uh, newspaper cuttings and tell you, you see Ukraine. You see what is happening in Timbuktu. You see now Mali was the first university in Africa. And something is happening in Mali. What is wrong with the people? We are not looking at that. We are looking at Jesus Christ that has taken us away. Are you playing?
you feel yes in your brother amen hallelujah kwa damu ya mwokozi we have a, a testimony here brother godfrey say thank you with me say thank god with me for the healing of orion he was diagnosed with a blood infection but god healed him thank you pastor and the saints for your prayers words words of encouragement during this whole time god bless you brother godfrey we appreciate god for healing for, for healing orion we thank god god loves you go with the love of god in whatever that you do in your heart may god lead you in whatever that you are doing when he gives you something that is of this earth tell him thank you because there is a reason why he's doing it the reason why god is preserving the earth is because of the nation of israel the reason is do and he loves you he wants you to partake of these things of the earth when you go before god don't fear don't say i need to qualify for you don't qualify jesus qualified if there is any trouble in your heart just believe god is going to do it for you if there is any sickness any discouragement tell him jesus christ took it all for me that god is not going to require anything from you he only that's why paul told of philemon if there is anything put it on my account everything was put on the account of jesus christ that you can be free today without someone preaching to you to pull you down it is by the grace of jesus christ you are saved father in the mighty name of jesus we come before you we say thank you father for your word we come and say heavenly father you've helped us lord you've saved us father you've healed us heavenly father you've given us a promise in your word father we can see ourselves have any father and our promise lord father we can see what you did with the old father abraham we can see how he walked in the same place where Abra adam walked we see him father on the banks of euphrates we see him being told walking in the land i'm giving you this land we see all those names mentioned in the bible we see ethiopia we see egypt we see ararat we see havila we see father assyria we see all those places heavenly father we see the godliness of god where you are going to rule from this other god but heavenly father we see heaven too the bible said there was a battle in heaven and michael fought with the dragon and their place was no more father it wasn't very far from the time the plan to take us off the earth was shaping up oh god Amen. father we thank you lord jesus that there, there is secret trumpet lord god Amen. there is the last trumpet oh father Amen. that is going to help us have our immortality Amen. father paul told us oh god i show you a mystery Amen. heavenly father is not the same trumpet oh god that is ushering the people in the millennium Amen. father lord god we appreciate you the program of god is ending heavenly father and we are grateful that you open our eyes we thank you for your people we thank you heavenly father because they are sick and they are going to be healed Amen. we thank you because they have got a problem they are going to be solved Amen. we thank you because they don't have money because they are going to have it Amen. heavenly father we thank you lord because their trouble is going to be settled Amen. we thank you heavenly father those who are jobless are going to get employment Amen. we thank you father for those who are troubled father are going to be released by jesus christ even those online father you commit them in your hands we bless you we sanctify your name thank you father today in the name of jesus christ amen amen, amen. praise the lord